Every PIC32 consists of a 32-bit CPU, flash memory to hold your program, random access memory or RAM to hold your data, as well as a number of peripherals that allow the CPU to communicate with the outside world. And there's many different models of PIC32s, but the one that we'll be studying is the PIC32MX795F512H. Now this particular PIC we are powering with 3.3 volts. It's got an 80 megahertz CPU. It has 512K of flash memory to hold your programs. It has 128 kilobytes of random access memory to hold your data. It has 16 10-bit analog to digital conversion inputs. And 10 bits means that it can read values between 0 and 2 to the 10 minus 1, or 1023. So it can read 1,024 different values between two voltages, uh, typically 0 and 3.3 volts. So that's typically paired with a sensor. Um, there's many digital input and outputs. There are five pulse width modulation channels. A pulse width modulation is um, a pulse train of varying frequency and duty cycle that you can control, typically to do things like control motors. Um, it's got five 16-bit timers. And these timers are used for either timing or counting operations. Uh, it's got a plethora of communication types available to it, including USB, CAN or Control Area Network, CAN bus, um, UARTs for things like RS-232, SPI, Serial Peripheral Interface, I squared C, inter-integrated circuits, circuit, and Ethernet. So this chip with 64 pins, we start here at pin number one, go down to 16, over to 32, up to 48, over to 64. This 64 pin chip can implement all of these peripherals and the question is, how do you cram so many of them into such a limited number of pins? And the answer is that each pin can carry more than one function. And let's, in particular, zoom in on this part of the chip here and take a look at pins 11 to 14. And let's focus on pin 12 here. So pin 12 has four potential functions. Uh, one is it can serve as an analog input, AN4, makes it an analog input. It can work with a comparator, so the C1N means it's one of two voltages that goes to a comparator that checks to see which voltage is larger. It can serve as a change notification pin, and what that means is if there's an input signal on that pin that changes value from ground to 3.3 volts, for example, it can trigger an interrupt so that the CPU knows that something has happened externally and has to attend to it. So that's the change notification function, or it could just serve as a digital input or output. So all four of these functions are available on this one pin. And the question of which fun that function that pin takes is answered by special function registers. So a special function register, or SFR for short, is uh, a memory location in the PIC32 that depending on the value written in that memory location will tell this pin 12 which of these four functions to take. The special function registers we'll be seeing over and over as we study how the PIC32 works because they're the main interface between the CPU and the various peripherals that surround it. So the CPU will write data to the special function register that will be interpreted by the peripheral circuits. When the peripheral circuits get data that they want to send back to the CPU, they'll write to special function registers and the CPU will access that. 